age of the death in Jefferson County is 55 years old, and in the city of Beaumont is 59. Um, the number of deaths in the month of August total, we had 82 deaths. The month of September, we had 76 deaths. In the month of October, we had 38 for the county. So the numbers are going down. Hospital report last week, we had 31 patients in the hospital. Yesterday, we had 15. Last week, we had 10 of those on ventilators. Yesterday, we had one. So hospitalizations is looking good. But again, we really want to get that number down to zero if we can. I'm just being really optimistic here. Uh, but as we see, even though the numbers are decreasing with the number of people in the hospital, it still is the pandemic of the unvaccinated. Even though we only have 15 in the hospital, but 87% of that 15 are unvaccinated. Our new cases, 14 day average, September to one, we was averaging 148. October one, we were averaging 82. And as of November the 2nd, that number is down to 16. So we're in a good place. It's going down. Again, as I stated last week, I want us to be cautiously optimistic. We're in a good place and that we just can hold on to after the holidays. And uh, these numbers are still on the decline come <coughs> January, February. Uh, I believe that we'll be on the other side of COVID. So I'm just asking people with the holidays coming up, and we'll be visiting, families traveling, families coming in. Just be careful, be mindful. And if you're around a crowd of people that you do not know their vaccination status, I urge you to continue to wear your mask, continue to social distance, continue to practice these public health measures that's been put in place because that's contributing to the numbers declining. Even though our vaccination numbers are not where I would like for them to be, but people are still coming in to get vaccinated. Not at the rate we would want them to, but again, they're coming in. So we're getting people every day is coming in for their uh, vaccine. So that's, help, that's helping to contribute to the decline in the cases. So that's our weekly update. Uh, any questions? No questions, Council. Mr. Coleman, thank you so very much for uh, such a positive uh, report. It's looking much, much better. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we have a proclamation uh, for National Diabetes Month, and I will read it. Whereas November is a time when communities across the country team up to bring attention to diabetes. Whereas there are three different types of diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disorder in which the immune system destroys cells within the body that makes insulin, a hormone that regulates blood sugar. Type 2 diabetes, which results when the body is not able to use insulin properly to regulate the blood sugar. And gestational diabetes a con condition during pregnancy in which the body doesn't use insulin properly. Whereas one in five people in the United States who has diabetes does not know they have it. According to the American Diabetes Association, that is 7.3 million people out of 34.2 million who are not aware they are living with the disease and all the health risk that poorly managed blood sugar can pose, which can cause damage to the heart, eyes, kidneys, and limbs without producing any symptoms. Whereas diabetes is the seventh leading cause of death in the United States and the sixth in Texas. Whereas an increase in community awareness is essential to put a stop to the diabetes epidemic. Whereas on Saturday, November 13th, 2021, the third annual Faith and Strength to Endure Community Diabetes Awareness Walk will take place at Rogers Park from 9 a.m. 
to 12 noon. Now, therefore, I, Robin Mouton, mayor of the city of Beaumont, do hereby proclaim November 2021 as National Diabetes Month in Beaumont and encourage all citizens to join the movement to confront, fight, and most importantly, change the future of this deadly disease. Accordingly, I, the mayor, have set my hand and caused the seal of the city of Beaumont to be affixed, signed Mayor Robin Mouton, this day, November 2nd, 2021, Receiving the proclamation are Tamika Clark, CEO and founder of Faith and Strength to Endurance and her husband, Derek Clark. If you'll please come forward, bring anyone with you to receive your proclamation. Thank you. Afternoon. Thank you, Mayor and City Council, for recognizing National Diabetes Awareness Month. Um, National Diabetes Awareness Month is very important for our community and just all over the world. Um, is I'm very passionate about it. Um, it. I started the organization in 2019. Um, my husband is a type two diabetic. Um, we started in, like I said, in 2019. Um, when he started having complications with his diabetes. Um, as she has read and the mayor has read in the um, proclamation that diabetes not only just affect, you know, your insulin intake, um, it affects your heart, it affects your lungs, your eyes, your lower extremities, um, anything that, that you're not, your pancreas is not producing insulin. Um, 2019, right before COVID hit, um, he had um, severe complication with his diabetes, which led him to a below-the-knee amputation. Um, with the below-the-knee amputation comes with all other complications, starting to walk all over again, therapy and everything like that. Um, so he had he ended up losing his job. Um, it affected families, well as my family. Um, so one of our main things that I prayed about and asked God to give me strength, which is I came up with the organization called Faith and Strength to Endure, um, coming from Hebrews 11. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. So in order to, just like any other awareness, um, breast cancer, Alzheimer's, you need faith. And you need faith in God. You need strength to endure everything that you um, everything that you go through, not only just the patient, but just the family that's affected by it. So the walk, we started in 2019 to help with medication, bring more resources to the community. Um, last year, we did the walk, and we have based it around juvenile diabetes. Juvenile diabetes is affecting kids, not only adults. So we raised about $500 to help a family with her medication, help with her supplies that she needs, or any other, any other supplies that she might need to help battle with diabetes. We partnered with different um, businesses in Southeast Texas. This year, one of our keynote speakers is Dr. Japera Levine. Um, we have a health nutritionist who's gonna be coming out talking about um, healthy lifestyle, healthy choices. Um, we have other vendors that come together and help to provide and to help to bring more awareness about diabetes. So as mentioned in a proclamation, the walk is on Saturday, November the 13th at Rogers Park from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Um, we'll have different vendors, different walkers out there. It's not a 3K, it's not a three mile walk. You just walk in support of anyone that you might know that have diabetes or just walk into support of the community. So I would love to have anyone from the city council to come and support um, 
And I'm going to continue to bring awareness to Southeast Texas about diabetes. I think it's very needed, and I think it's very, very important. Thank you. Ms. Clark, thank you so very much mm -hmm. for such a, a, a positive message, like you say, not only to our community, but uh, uh, across the world, because mm -hmm. so many people, as they say, could have the disease and not even know it. So thank you for the work that you're doing, and best of luck to you and your husband and your family. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to our city manager for our City of Beaumont Employee Service Award. Thank you. Mayor and Council, we would like to recognize today some of our long-serving employees. Uh, they have all made uh, positive contributions, many positive contributions, and they are uh, very much appreciated. And Mayor Mouton, if you come down with me at this time. <coughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
He's talking to God. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of dedicated service to the city of Belmont. Now is the time for any citizen who wish to speak. If you have not already done so, please fill out the green slip to the back of the room, hand it to the clerk to the front of the room. She will call your name when it's time for you to speak. The light will come on. You will have three minutes. And at the end of your three minutes, the red light will come on, which is your indication to stop. Colin Ellard, 701 Trinity, Beaumont, Texas. My name is Colin Eller. The document I provided are copies of the vaccine adverse event reporting system from December through October 22nd. Since the beginning of the pandemic, we have been told Ms. that a vaccine would be Mr. Fast. Eller, is this an item that's on, on the consent agenda or the agenda? If not, it will have to be something that's discussed at the end of the meeting. Oh, I can wait till the end. Okay, meeting. because you had discussion items, so I thought it was something I, on the consent agenda. I didn't, uh, I didn't okay, know we'll call your name towards okay. the end. Thank you. <clears throat> I don't have any others, Mayor. Thank you. At this time, uh, may I have a motion for the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? No discussion? Please signify by saying aye for approval. Aye. aye. Any opposed? The motion carry. May I have the reading of the first item, please? Madam Council, item number one is to consider approving the purchase of 20 vehicles for use in various city departments. Uh, the fleet manager, who's actually on the fourth road, uh, Jeff Harville, through the budget process, makes a recommendation to replace worn and obsolete vehicles that are no longer cost effective uh, to operate the vehicles to be purchased at this time, they're replacing models ranging from 2007 to 2017, except uh, for one Ford F-250. That will be in addition to the city's water production fleet. Uh, the vehicles will be purchased from Silsby Ford in the amount of $1,133,767.45. Uh, funds were budgeted in the capital reserve fund as well as the water fund, the administration recommends approval. Thank you. You've heard the reading of item number one. May I have a motion, please? Move to approve. May second. I have a second? <coughs> second. Any discussion? No Council Member Neal. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Manager, item number one, uh, the trucks for the EMS, are our ambulances not normally diesel? Jeff, do you want to come answer that? Or the chief? Wow. Councilman Neal, they are typically diesel. What we found, we've been having problems out of diesel engines. Uh, they have a, uh, their, their fuel pump is a high pressure fuel pump and one of those goes bad. It's a $10,000 repair. So last year, I started buying gas engines, uh, which have served well so far. Uh, I've gotten a lot out of the diesel engines so far. They've served us well by going to gas, and uh, that, that's the way that we're going. Back in the day, uh, diesel engines used to be the, the go-to engine, but uh, they've done a lot of improvements in gas, so we buy gas now. So are you going to move the gas on all the fleet where you can? I'm headed that direction, yes. Gas is also cheaper as well. Doesn't cost as much per gallon. All right, thank you. Any other questions? All in favor of approving item number one, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. May I have the reading of item number two, please? 
Mayor and Council, item number two is to consider approving the purchase of a fire truck, a 2022 pumper truck uh, would be purchased from Siddons Martin Emergency Group out of Denton, Texas in the amount of $713,315. Uh, the new truck will, uh, would replace a 2003 model that has a little over 71,000 miles. Uh, the new fire truck would be designated as engine number seven and uh, will be housed at station seven located at 1710 McFadden Avenue. Uh, delivery uh, is expected within 16 months. Therefore, funds would need to be budgeted in the, in the fiscal year 2023 budget. The administration recommends approval. Thank you. You've heard the reading of item number two. May I have a motion, please? Motion for approval. Second. It's been motion and second. All in favor? I'm sorry, any discussion? I have a question, Mayor. Council Member Turner. I see in the reading it says <coughs> the truck was at 71,359 miles. Uh, can someone kind of educate me and kind of inform me if that like normal to life expectancy or? Good evening, Councilman and City Manager. Your question again, Councilman, I'm sorry. Uh, I noticed it said the mileage was at 71,359 miles. Just getting familiar with fire trucks, is that like the life expectancy or is it a, a certain amount of miles we kind of look at? Or The life expectancy is actually 25 years, 20 years, uh, 15 to 16 years as a front line, and then it goes into reserve. So what we do is once it reaches its uh, lifetime as a frontline piece of equipment we try to replace it and put it in reserve status and uh older engine will go to auction all right thank you i just want to clarify that so yes, i can sir. be educated when i inform citizens yes sir. So, so chief what is remember thank you what was the uh year that the uh i'm not seeing it when 2003 2003, 2003 of um, pierce okay uh i see it okay thank you oh. Any other questions? I do. So you said it, it goes to auction. So the funds that not, are not not the one that's currently in service. The one that's currently in service will go into reserve status, and uh, <clears throat> an older engine will then go to auction. An older reserve engine will then go to auction. Okay. That so has reached its life as both a front line and a reserve piece of equipment. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Any other discussion? Thank you, Chief. Thank you. All in favor of approving item number two, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carry. May I have the reading of item number three, please? Item number three is to consider <coughs> authorizing the city manager to execute a contract with King Solution Services, LLC, uh, for the Amelia Cutoff Sewer Line Emergency Repair. Jefferson County uh, Drainage District 6 owns and maintains a ditch referred to as Ditch 202. It's also known as the Amelia Cutoff. Uh, this ditch crosses College Street just east of Montrose Avenue. Water utility staff identified a cavity in the ditch on October the 15th. Uh, this cavity appears to be caused by a failure in uh, a sewer line that crosses the ditch near Brighton Street. Uh, the sewer line is 18 inches in diameter and approximately 17 feet deep. Uh, the failure in the line allows a large volume of uh, rainwater, stormwater to enter the sewer system during rain events, uh, causing the system to surcharge. On October the 19th, uh, staff solicited six bids for furnishing all labor, materials, equipment, and supplies necessary to perform an exploratory excavation to determine the extent of the required repair. Uh, the staff uh, recommends awarding the contract, again, to King Solution Services in the amount of $125,000. The bids included unit prices for additional efforts that may be required as the excavation proceeds. Once the leak is located and repair options are assessed, uh, staff will request the contractor 
if available to complete the necessary repairs. Pricing will be on, on a not to exceed time and materials basis. Uh, funds are available in the capital program. Uh, the administration recommends approval. Uh, Mike <coughs> Harris and, and Bart Barkowiak are here. Can hopefully answer any questions you may have. We recommend approval. Thank you. You've heard the reading of item number three. May I have a motion, please? Move to approve the resolution. May I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Councilmember Durio and Councilmember so Turner. This this contract is just to find out exactly how bad the problem is. It's not to repair it or both of those included in the price. It's it's just to explore, to excavate, to find out what the repair is needed. Um, only. And, and after we find out how bad that is, then it would have to go out for bid again for somebody to repair it? it? We'll do it under emergency services. If King's available, then we'll ask them to, to make the repair. But we have to assess exactly what's required um, for the repair first. And this uh, 125000 that's that's just for the uh, exploratory? Yes, sir. Yeah, see what's wrong. Yes, sir. It's 17 feet deep. It's got several pipelines in the vicinity, and they're going to have to dig down, trench it for safety. They're going to have to saw cut the concrete in the DD6 ditch, and then they're going to have to protect against stormwater, potentially bypass that, as well as bypass the sewer flow in the line. So it's a little complex on those. So would DD6 have, since it's their ditch, do they have a part in this also? <laughs> Let, they're, they're glad that we'll repair it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, one of, what, it, what does it mean when it says uh, causing the system to surcharge? Where's that? Fills it full of water. So it, there's, that's how they found it is that you could see the water actively flowing uh, and then they put dye in there and confirmed that it was going into the, the sewer lines. There's quite a bit of inflow there uh, into that line. And Council thanks to our engineering staff that went out and found this along with Mike Harris and found the water intrusion because this is a major uh, piece of the water intrusion for this line, so it'll help. Councilmember Turner. Uh, I noticed that we actually have two bids in front of us, and we were told six. I see one bid is at $328,000. The other bid is at $125,000. That's almost a two hundred three thousand dollar difference. Can you explain what's so why is such a significant difference? Did the one the, the other four come in kind of in between? Like the other four didn't respond. It, okay. it's been a challenging environment. There's so much money in the marketplace right now for contractors that they're picking and choosing what work they want to do, and a lot of the bids are coming in higher. So, I. I'm just guessing, but I would imagine Bright Star's got a lot of work, and so they threw a higher bid out there. We we did expect that the work should be around the 125 that we got in, um, ideally. So luckily we got a bid in that range. So to to he, we kind of were expecting to be around come in around 125,000, yes, correct? Sir. Yeah. Uh, my next question is, would this in that Amelia area actually help with flushing and things of that magnitude? How can it? How is it going to really be a benefit to those citizens in that area? Well, the line is being surcharged, so this will improve uh, sewer flow out of that Amelia area once we fix this in rain events. That's it. Well, I have a question. I'm, I'm really uh, curious uh, why, why is the city of Alma taking the burden for the entire cost of it and DD6 isn't? It's our it's sanitary our line, sewer It's all line. our line? It's our yes, ma'am. We're the ones that to, cause the problem. It's, it's okay. just, it just happens to cross the ditch. Yep. It's okay. our line. Just checking. No. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All in favor of approving item number please, three, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carry. At the close of the city council meeting, the council will hold an executive session to consider matters related to contemplated or pending litigation in accordance with section 551.071 of the government code, claim of Jayla Sutton to discuss matters related to the Texas Opioid MDL 
in reference Texas opioid litigation, MDL number 2018-63587 in the 152nd District Court of Harris County. Also Jefferson County, Texas versus the City of Beaumont, cause number B-198.481. Thank you. <clears throat> now it's the time for any, any citizen who wish to speak. Please fill out uh, the green slip at the back of the room if you haven't already done so. Hand it to the clerk at the front of the room. She will call your name when it's time for you to speak. The green light will come on and the red light will come on at the end of your three minutes. Um, Colin Eller, 701 Trinity, Beaumont, Texas. Okay, the documents I provided are copies of the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System from December through October 22nd. Since the beginning of the pandemic, we have been told that a vaccine would be fast-tracked and distributed to the population to save us from a virus that has a 99.7% survival rate. Numerous doctors have successfully treated COVID using alternative treatments, but this information has been censored and demonized. We now have significant data for the miracle vaccines. The statistics I'm about to read are compiled from less than 12 months of data compared to 31 years of data from all other vaccinations. <clears throat> Number of adverse reactions from the COVID vaccine, 837,595, 800, all other vaccinations, 839,945. Number of life-threatening events, COVID vaccine, 19,583. All other vaccines, 13,705. Number of hospital hospitalizations, COVID vaccine, 86,542. All other vaccines, 78,956. Number of deaths, COVID vaccine, 17,619. All other vaccines, 9,196. 9 Number of permanent disabilities after vaccinations, COVID vaccine, 27,277. All other vaccines, 19,799. Number of office visits, COVID vaccines, 130,794. All other vaccines, 46,019. Number of emergency room department visits, COVID vaccine, 94,107. All other vaccines, 210,856. Number of birth defects after vaccinations, COVID vaccine, 599. All other vaccines, 149. <coughs> if these statistics were from a product such as contaminated food or a defective toy, everyone would be involved to find the source of the problem and resolve the issue. The local news networks would begin their broadcast with the story, the health department would investigate the source of the hazard, and government officials would have press conferences informing the public of the dangers. Why isn't the same urgency given to these defective vaccines? Millions of adult Americans have taken these experimental shots that are now proven to be dangerous and ineffective. Now our children are the next targets of the administration and pharmaceutical companies for distribution. Our media has failed to inform our population of dangers associated with these shots, including our local media sources. I have come today to encourage the members of council to investigate the data provided and inform the public of the dangers. The long-term side effects are still unknown. We have a duty as informed citizens to protect our neighbors, especially our children. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, sir. I'm Brian Neepfo, 3415 Laurel, Beaumont, Texas. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Uh, I guess first I wanted to say we had a successful uh, make ends meet trunk or treat uh, Sunday afternoon. I think we passed out about 50 pounds of candy. Uh, Mr. Getz had about five of it by himself. <laughs> so uh, I wanted to, to thank Earl White, uh, our fire chief, for sending out one of the fire trucks and uh, Jimmy Singletary, our police chief, for sending out three uh, police units right in front. And uh, so where our tent was, we. We had a lot of little Beaumonters. We passed out about 1,300 flyers to Amelia and Sally Curtis so that 
uh, they would get those in their backpacks and know to come out. We had a great time, uh, watched a movie, and um, we'll be doing it again next year. Uh, so also I passed out a flyer in front of uh, you guys. I think I missed one or two of you. But uh, we're doing our Operation Beaumont Beautification. It'll be on November the 20th, Saturday at 10 a.m. Uh, it's at St. Charles Plaza, which you might be familiar with the Little Caesars in the parking lot. It's on the corner of Dallin and Calder in the parking lot. We'll meet there. Uh, we'll have the grabbers rubber gloves, trash bags. We'll make a little walk down Pritzman Road, pick up the trash, and um, everybody's invited to join in. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Jeremy Popovich, 895 Chamberlain Drive, Beaumont, Texas. Well, good afternoon, all of you familiar faces. Been out of town for a little while. Um, my business agent Rick Lord was here a couple weeks ago, and I feel like I need I need to hit on some things as well. With our current situation here in the city of Beaumont, with 650 workers still locked out, still locked out. That's all summer long. We're riding on into Christmas time now. Still locked out, not able to go to work. What does that mean for the city of Beaumont? It means that these people don't have a paycheck that they can go eat out at, they aren't going to be buying gas from the convenience stores, they're not going to be joining us for any evening festivities anytime soon because they don't have any money coming in. It's easy to be complacent in life when you're not really directly affected, when it's not your husband, it's not your wife, it's not your son, it's not any of your family. But they're actually closer to you than you would imagine. They're probably your neighbors, more than likely they are. So let's try to remember that. Exxon doesn't live here. Those workers live here. Okay. And the reason we have to address this is because it's pretty evident that we have a very anti-union movement going on in a very union town. Because let's not forget history. And this is a union town. Working people built this town. Working people got the first union member mayor ever elected. And that's why I want to talk about this too. Because yeah, we, we supported the mayor on her very, very victorious run. Hard, but victorious. And you know, some of the things that happened during the campaign, we thought were all horrible, egregious, and low, and petty. You know, we, we didn't imagine they were just gonna go away overnight. They're happening right now, two weeks ago, for a whole week on a billboard. Now, a lot of these I'm not even going to try to waste y'all's time with come up with a clever word, but people that were quick to jump on the story and share it and give a half-cocked opinion about how we do business. Plumbers Local 68 has always been on top of the political game. We have a PAC fund, so maybe Google what a PAC fund is and how it operates. I know a lot of you understand because all but one of you have had our support and y'all enjoy it and we enjoy you and thank you for being there for you, us when we need you to be there. I think it's sad and this is coming from somebody who graduated from Vider High School and I've had to defend this position quite a bit throughout my life that every time we have a strong black woman who breaks the glass ceiling and breaks impossible barriers Instead of congratulating her, mud is slung from a very distinct side of town. And we're going to work to fix that. We'll take it on the chin this time. We know who you are. It's sad that you're that way. But you know what? I know my kids can be a better person. And I know the youth's going to be better people. So, Mayor, and for the rest of the council that we do support, we're going to continue to give you that. And we're going to support y'all's great city. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Terry, Terry Roy, 9150 Shepherd, Beaumont, Texas. Afternoon, Mayor, Council. Uh, I was coming here to, to let everybody know that Amelia still exists in Beaumont, even though it's one of the worst as far as infrastructure in Beaumont. I was proud to see that they finally found the one of the solutions to the problem 
And that pipe had to have been burst since maybe six years ago, which is when the problem started that I had. A lot of you weren't even on council when I started having those problems. But now we're dealing with another issue, which is flooding. And if you walk through through the Amelia area, you'll find that over 80% of the pipes that cover the city ditches are almost underneath the ground. And that's why we having the, the problems that we're having. And I seen where they had some of the things proposed to be done in, I guess, this year's budget, and nothing from Amelia was in there. Now, I'm represented by four people, and I expect those four people to answer to me because we all, y'all work for me, essentially. And if y'all not uh, supporting me, I can't possibly support you. And that's not nothing personal. That's just what it is. And I expect somebody to, to answer why 80% of the ditches in the mid are, are covered. And that's, that should be a priority. And if not, then I'll, I'll know that the next time. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I have, Mayor. <clears throat> At this time, uh, we will have council member comments, and I'll start with you, council member Durio. No comment, Mayor. Council member Getz. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. I want to compliment Principal Phillips at Westbrook High School and Beaumont Independent School District for taking the initiative to try to do something to uh, modify adverse student behavior that's going on at the school. And I'm talking about his recently enacted memorandum that says that students will not be able to use their phones during the school day other than when they're at lunch. And I support that. I believe that uh, most of us up here on council was able to get through school, a school day without using our cell phones. These students have Chromebooks to be able to uh, look up things that they need to do. They don't need to do it on their phones. Uh, the fact of the matter is that uh, social media on phones at these schools are often used for improper purposes and set up fights, and it's just uh, something that they need to get their hands around and also following up on that I want to compliment Gary Senegar for taking the initiative to uh, reorganize his dad's on deck program there was a good meeting last night out uh, at a church in the Caldwood area where uh, there were actually four council members there several school board members a former mayor was there and uh, it was a good meeting and so it talked about how we as citizens can volunteer uh, at BISD to uh, work at the schools and kind of monitor the halls and uh, be a mentor to students. So uh, that's something I plan on signing up for and encourage other citizens that feel like that's something that they might want to do to uh, do as well. Lastly, I want to uh, uh, ask everybody to support the Houston Astros tonight. Uh, they're in the World Series. Their backs are against the wall. They're down three to two, uh, but they won a big one uh, uh, Sunday night in Atlanta. So uh, hopefully they can come back to Houston and uh, win two in a row and take it all home. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Councilmember Turner. Yes, on last night we did meet at 519 Church uh, for the dads on decks and moms too. The reason for this program is to actually get involved with the schools and assist the schools as well as the school board and working together in unison to help with our discipline and action and problems that we've been having in Beaumont. I want everyone to understand you can't isolate a problem such as that because at the end of the day our school district plays a pivotal part in the growth of Beaumont so I think it's vitally important that we as a community support the Beaumont Independent School District. So I have already signed up for that and I will be in support of that and I encourage everybody in the community to support that. This Friday, Kids Are Kids, 6410 Delaware Street, a new business just opened up and they'll do their ribbon cutting. So if you guys in the community can come out this Friday, that'll be great. Uh, the owner personally asked me to invite the entire council so all you guys are invited and it'll be great if you guys came and su su supported her. It's gonna take place at five o'clock p.m. She invested a lot of money in our community. I think it's a good look for us to support her. 
the next thing is everyone who did activities this weekend for the youth and for the kids, you highly you highly appreciate it. I participated in several. I hated I couldn't make it to all of them, but thank everyone for stepping up and doing things for the community. And last but not least, I'd like to say the congratulations to all the staff that it was awarded today. Uh, service is a good thing, a beautiful thing, and it takes a unique person to be consistent and serve. And so I'm a man of service, and I wanted to personally thank everybody who did get the awards today. You appreciate it. Thank you. Council Member Felshaw. Thank you, Mayor. Just as Councilman Turner said, uh, congratulations to the employees for the service award. If you think about it, five people totaling 145 years. If you divide five into that, that's 29 years on average. So congratulations to the city manager and his staff, the employees of this great city. That tenure, that institutional memory, that experience is what makes our city so strong. And so it says something when you're able to maintain people in a, a, a work environment for 29 years on average. So congratulations, well done. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council Member. Samuel. <laughs> he looked this at me and I was getting ready to call his name. That's okay. I just want to also say uh, congratulations to the recipients of the service awards. Uh, we're always proud of our uh, city employees here, so congratulations. Thank you, Council Member Neal. No comment. City Manager? Okay. City Attorney. No Thank you. Well, I do have a few comments. First of all, I would like to thank. Um, all of our city employees who were uh, recognized today for uh, their commitment to the city. Um, and that's a testament to uh, the city um, that um, someone would stay here for that long, uh, 145 years. I was looking through my papers to add up um, all of the years of service, and, and that's a lot of service and dedication. Uh, also, uh, there will be a ribbon cutting on Friday at the old L.L. Milton Y, 3455 Sarah. Uh, we've heard so much about it um, throughout the past years, but it is now Sarah Street Wellness Group. And so on Friday at 1130, uh, I will be cutting uh, the ribbon uh, for uh, the new center. Uh, it's going to be something that's vital to that community, uh, something that is well needed in, in the community. So please come out and celebrate the new Sarah Street Wellness Group. Um, also, um, there has been a lot of talk about uh, BISD. And as uh, Councilmember uh, Turner and Councilmember Getz said, the school district is vital to the growth of our city. So it is not the responsibility of the school board, the teachers, and the council. It's the responsibility of everyone that lives here. And so everyone really, really need to take a part in it. Uh, there's a lot that's going on. We're dealing with a whole different mindset, a whole different world of children. I, I could tell you, if my daddy said, do not touch the curtains, we didn't touch them. This is not the generation that we're dealing with today. And so it is so vital that everyone get involved and take a part in this because um, more than ever, when they say we need a village, we need the village now, more than ever. Um, there are uh, metal detectors that... Uh, are being installed in the school. And so it just reflect back for me, uh, the movie Lean on Me, you know, and when it gets to the part where you have to have a metal detector at a, a middle school and a high school, this is serious, folks. This is really, really serious. And so I think uh, everyone needs to take it seriously. And so uh, please get involved, get involved. And um, also on this Sunday, um, there were so many people that uh, made sure that the children were not on the streets, that they were safe. 
Um, the police department had a line that just would not quit. I think um, the more candy they gave out, uh, the more people came. I mean, the line was down the street, wrapped down the, uh, almost to the railroad track. And you look around the corner, just when you think the line uh, was diminishing, then a whole nother group would come. Um, but they gave out tons of candy on Saturday. Um, the Pruitt Center, Stacy Lewis had a, a nice program, ran into Council Member Turner out there, and um, also Antioch uh, Church had a big screen out on the parking lot, had the perfect weather. I sat out there, I couldn't even tell you what I watched, but it was a cartoon. And um, they gave out, they, they had food, they had popcorn, they had buckets of candy already prepackaged. So parents, uh, I'm sure kids have been jumping, probably turning flips all weekend uh, since Sunday night. So to all, um, everyone that made sure that our children were safe, thank you so very much. And um, last but not least, go Astros. So thank you for coming and we will recess into executive session. Thank you.